What's going on guys, Sam Klon from Sam McKay Fit, checking with the guys, you guys are doing well, doing terrific, and we are back with another video. So this is probably one of the most uh, requested videos that I've gotten in recent times, especially follow me on Instagram, if you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you do, Sam Okunolo, it's very simple. But yeah, this is one of the uh, most requested videos that I've gotten um, in a while, and that video is essentially uh, asking or asking me to talk about how does my current training program looks like with running. And uh, yeah, we're doing it, breaking everything down to you guys guys you know how I train how I track me now I uh, design my training program uh, just to make sure I'm able to run um, all the miles I've been running throughout the week and still be able to lift and put you know progress uh, in my strength gains and making sure I'm still getting some lean tissue mass while I'm still running at the same time so yeah that's what we're gonna be getting into this video today and you know before we move ahead and go ahead and get into this video make sure you give this video a thumbs up like it Comment and let me know if you run a lot. If you're doing some sort of hybrid program, let me know in the comment section. I would love to, you know, kind of just get an idea of, you know, how your training program or split looks like. There's a lot of training templates out there they can follow. Hopefully this, you know, letting you guys know what I do might give you a little bit of insight into how you too can program your strength training with your running, especially if you're doing both. Without further ado, I'm about to knock out some pre-workout over here real quick. And we're gonna dive into the program. Right, so before we dive into the program, uh, that I, what I'm doing right now, uh, while I sit on some uh, pre-workout, of course, I'm okay if it will save you 10%. Um, I want to talk to you guys about gym, gym wear real quick. So I got this uh, in the mail. I bought myself a uh, U-Bar. Uh, it is obviously because it's going to be, uh, I'm going to be training today, by the way, taking you guys through my leg session, hamstring focused. I normally use uh, Versa Grips, which is like the, the, one of the most popular. Um, straps out there and I just saw one of my buddy uh, one of my fellow BPN um, ambassador Chad Mathis tagged him yes Versa Grip especially the uh, the pro one can be expensive I think it's like $90 something like that uh, so but I saw this I'm like wow that kind of looks relatively close and similar and it's cheaper about one third of what you pay and wow okay so this is what it looks like this is not sponsored by the way, or like that. I don't have any code. I'm actually using one of my buddy's code, Chad, and uh, I'll let you guys know at the end of the video if I like the straps or not. I, I already like it. So anyway, I know I get a lot of flack a lot of times when I, you know, especially like in the last few videos, like people are asking I should put my sets and repetitions on the screen. I'll be putting that on the screen for you guys while I take it through my hamstring focus workout today. But while I go through and dive through what my training program looks like throughout the week while I run. So before I get into the first movement, which is gonna be a line leg curls, let me break down what my training split for the week is. So right now it's a five day training split. Uh, so Monday, I mean, well, the first day typically uh, upper body session, a push session, session. Second is a leg session, then a pull session, then another leg session, then upper, upper body session. So the first um, push session is obviously focused on a lot of chest movement, a lot of pressure movements. Uh, second day is gonna be a leg focus, which is gonna be a more quad focused. And I'll still, I mean, I still train both quads and hamstrings because I like to try to touch at least each body part twice a week. Um, the third day is gonna be pull session, obviously back focused. And uh, the fourth day is gonna be leg focused, which obviously it's more hamstring focused, which I'm doing today. Then the last is gonna be upper body session where I combine a little bit of pull and, and push session uh, together. So in total, five days a week, five day training split. And I'm trying to touch each body part twice a week. So that is the current training split. I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions about, I typically get a lot of questions about training split 
split. And now my answer to that will always be, there is no such thing as a perfect split. You gotta do the split that allows you to get the most amount of volume that you need to be doing to induce some sort of growth stimulus to allow you to grow. So don't let anybody tell you this is a perfect split, this is the perfect split for, I mean, that you should be doing. The perfect split is a split that's gonna allow you to get the most out of your volume, your training week. So five days a week right now, that split allows me to at least touch my body part twice a week while I still have enough time to recover from my training session and my running session. Yeah, talking to my mirror like I love you so much. Curving on my critics like I heard you so what? You can't kill my confidence, I think I'm the man. Tally all the f I ever gave on my head. Lately, I've been living like I can't take a loss. They ain't wanna help me, that's what made me a boss. You can't kill my confidence, I think I'm the man. We don't give a f that's what they. So that was Lane Lit Curls. So Lane Lit Curls, I'm doing four sets, 12 to 15. And I'm gonna get a lot of questions about uh, why are you doing Lane Lit Curls before like a big compound movement? So if you follow any of my training program, follow me on Instagram, like I said earlier, I think you should. Um, I talked about uh, leg extensions before like a big compound movement. So think about it this way. You have more energy right now to attack your hamstrings as hard as you can. Uh, before you move into compound movement. Compound movement is very tasking, it's very tiring, right? So by the time you, want, you, go, you go through the big compound tiring movements and you get to like your small movements or small uh, movements like leg, leg, leg curls, by small I mean it's not too tasking, uh, there's not a huge amount of systemic fatigue, it's more like a lot of local fatigue, right? When you train, uh, which, uh, when you do movements like a line leg curl, leg curl, leg extension and, and such. So why do you want to put that at the end when you're already tired? and gas and you kind of half-ass it. So get a lot of stimulus, right? You have a fresh energy to attack this movement like leg extensions or leg curls. While it's not gonna impact your um, bigger movements. They don't understand. I'm back again like flu season. I broke records while loose leaf and I'm coming now on my roof leaving. Don't give a I don't care. Uh, did the by my lonesome. No wonder now I'm on one. No shortcuts on that long run. All I really want is my share. Uh, get on my god on my told him it's nothing In the discussion Fuck all them feelings I throw all my pain on percussion The disgusting I hear them bragging about that they did And they do not move me Not in the least They ain't been dropping no seeds in the soil But swear that you all So Just finished doing our DLs uh, So that was four sets uh, Seven to ten Another uh, pro tip here uh, I've, I've mentioned it In um, a different platform before And the pro tip is Typically big movements with a hip hinge movement like this, uh, deadlifts, um, RDLs, uh, stiff legged deadlifts, things like that, you wanna, you don't wanna take it more than 10 to 12 repetitions. Just because a lot of times you typically will expose yourself to getting hurt, right? So you wanna keep it between seven to 12. If you can get more than seven to 12 or, you know, uh, seven to 10, um, great. Then you have some room to progress on the next training cycle, meaning you increase the load, but not the repetition, it's more than 10 to 12 repetitions. Because ideally speaking, again, you lose your grip uh, because, um, you lose your grip because it's one, it's heavy. Sorry, I'm out of breath because again, I just finished four sets of that. Um, it's heavy. So then you tend to, your, your form gets sloppy, uh, you get out of position, out of pocket, and all of a sudden, you know, you expose yourself to getting injured. So you wanna keep that between uh, 10 to 12 repetitions. So that's four sets. And the next movement I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna be doing is gonna be good mornings. But another pro tip is because I already did two back-to-back -back hamstring movement, that's gonna give me a lot of time to give my uh, hamstrings and lower back a little bit of break and I'm gonna jump into leg extensions just to fire up some quads. Robo, wave ride, cool shawty, too naughty, pool party, wet for the face ride. Any up, penny down, hand me down, thrift store, old drip. New money, too funny, old shorty, talk about old. I'm on eight now, can't get a pass now, I'm a cash cow, keeping it brash now. It's trash now, I'm a spaz out, I've been killing my lows and living on highs. You see in the skies the proof, you could just see in my eyes that there is no lies, I cannot disguise the truth. I've been ducked off, getting in my new merch. 
So that's the lug extension that just completed. Again, pro tip, like I mentioned a few videos ago, if you have an equipment at the gym that doesn't give you a lot of uh, you know, flexion or allow you to uh, have a good range of motion, that shortens, uh, shortens, the machine shortens the range of motion for you, a good hack is you use a pad uh, to put it on the, use a yoga mat to put it on the pad so you can increase that range of motion and get a little more uh, flexion uh, on your quads. So, yeah, so that's leg extension right there. Um, nothing really fancy about that. Uh, it's just added into the program just to get a little more stimulus. Uh, the only leg extension quad movement that I'm doing is gonna be adding just a leg extension just to get some stimulus on my quads uh, for today. Obviously, it's a predominant, you know, hamstring focused day, but I still wanna make sure I'm touching some sort of legs. And also, this program right now is week three, so you're not really gonna see me like, you know, push the limit of my training. Uh, I'm, it's a week, it's a six week mess cycle. That's all, that's all I'm usually running in anyways um, you can design any mid cycle however you want in six five four ten weeks but typically six six weeks is usually the sweet spot for most people uh, before when it gets to like you know the you know the the seven and eight then it becomes a little more fatiguing and performance tends to go out of the way that's what I've noticed from working and programming for a lot of clients so I keep it six weeks it allows me to like you know keep my focus engaged and uh, you know push myself get in get out Rinse and repeat. The duck sauce on the new couch with my chuck song. Get the f on with that. Hey, I'm big cool on the small chat. Cause I know now that I'm all that. Got a hot guy on the ball cat. Get the f out of my face. Uh. Talking to my mirror like I love you so much. Curving on my critics like I heard you so what? You can't kill my confidence. I think I'm the man. Let me talk about my training right now. So my training has not really been programmed by anybody else. So the training app that I use to log on my training miles or track on my training miles or give or program my train my running miles is called Run a Run with How. That's what I use for my half marathon. I just put another goal in there, which I'm going to talk about in another video, and uh, it's just going to pretty much ramp up my run for me. And right now I'm doing about 20 to 26 miles per week and that is what um it's going on right now. So within that 26 miles, I have days when, let's say for instance, uh, my Mondays, it's usually a recovery run, about three to four miles or so. Uh, then then the, the next day, it's gonna be another three miles. I have a break between that. I have a mid-range mile, meaning by six to seven miles. And I have my longer run. Uh, I have another mid-range mile from Saturday and my typically longer runs are on Sunday. So how does that apply to my training? Days when I have longer runs, let's say Sunday for instance, so of course, I'm not going to go in and train legs. I typically program my uh, training session to be right um, my upper body right after a long run because that gives me some time to recover within a day or two. So even if I jump into a recovery run on, on, on the next day, for instance, as if I train on, if I have a long run on Sunday and now on Monday I have a recovery run, which is a low mileage, I'm going to be training upper body. So recovery allows me to at least obviously eat a little more food, recover a little bit better. So by the time I get to Tuesday when I'm doing my leg session, my leg is is somewhat recovered. Oh, the f I ever gave on my head. Lately, I've been living like I can't take a loss. They ain't wanna help me, that's what made me a boss. You can't kill my confidence, I think I'm the man. We don't give a f that's what they don't understand. We just finished just now. Again, it's a uh, good morning. So normally I use a machine at the previous gym that I normally do is the reverse hack that I try, try to do. Uh, so instead of doing like a free, uh, you know, a low bar, high bar, uh, uh, good mornings. I'm using machine to put myself in that sort of hip, hip inch motion. So something I'm doing throughout my training program right now, especially when it comes to uh, leg training, again, because that's most fatigue, obviously because I'm running a lot, I'm using them a lot more. Uh, something that comes to the training or choosing my exercises, uh, pretty much relying on movements that's gonna give me less systemic fatigue, but more of a local fatigue, meaning leg extensions, uh, trying to stay away from axle loading, axle loading meaning movements that I'm gonna be putting on my back. So 
won't be too tasked in my central nervous system, which is going to impact my recovery. So using movement like a Smith machine, again, it's going to focus on nothing but just straight muscle, less tasking on my lower back that I don't have to exert a lot of energy from. So that's why I'm choosing movements like, you know, again, machine squats or leg extensions or leg press. The only um, uh, quad dominant day, quad dominant day, the only leg uh, training that I'm doing, uh, movement that I'm doing that might be more of an axle loading is just squat, just because I'm loving squat more now because I'm able to do it. And again, with that movement right there, with the leg stay, leg up, make with, with quad, I am not, you know, programming, you know, high repetitions on them, which I would not encourage you to, because again, back to the point of going to minimize, you know, keeping your rep rate between like, you know, seven to 12, even on movements like back squat, for instance, just because technique will typically go out of the way. Technique will typically go out of the way when you're using movements like when you're using movements like back squat and you're going above like 12 to 15 rep ranges. A lot of times you cardiovascular endurance will go out of the way, technique will go out of the way, and obviously, inevitably, you are gonna expose yourself to injuries. That's why you wanna keep that rep a little bit lower. Still anything between seven to 12 will still put you in that sort of a hypertrophic range. Just a little pro tip for you guys on my leg day. So just to put everything together for you guys, so obviously when you design a training program, you have to figure out a minimum effective volume. And a lot of times there's no really a fixed benchmark number. It's sometimes a lot of things uh, you have to do is just to kind of, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with 14 sets per muscle group and see how well my recovery is. If I'm recovering well enough and I can definitely add more, then I will recommend don't just add more sets or more volume right away, finish that cycle, but take note of that so you can increase that volume on the next training. So right now my normal, my typical one, I'm not, when I wasn't running, my normal total sets when it comes to like leg, uh, 20 to 24 sets for quads, uh, 20 to 24 sets for hamstrings per week. And I can find myself recovering fully well with that. But right now, I have obviously, I've dummy that down. So for today, for instance, you know, four sets on line leg curls, DLs, uh, four sets, uh, three sets on uh, good mornings, and three sets on uh, quads. So total uh, hamstring uh, movement that I did today, you're looking at about 11 so again um, I'm having another I'm, when I'm doing my main quad day movement on my second leg day I, of course I'm going to incorporate some hamstring movement into that too which is typically about four sets so total about 14 uh, uh, sets right now which puts me within the range of like my minimum effective volume that I can recover well enough but st at the same time I'm still in, I'm inducing some, some sort of growth stimulus uh, you know throughout that throughout my menstrual cycle again when you're designing a training program for yourself you have to highlight the points or the areas of your body that you're trying to incorporate. Uh, don't just run full volume on every body part. Focus on each body part because it allows you to narrow your focus a little bit, but obviously you're not neglecting the rest of your body, so you want to make sure you're hitting your minimum effective volume on that particular muscle group. So with the leg training and running, of course, there is no way I can keep up and train effectively or have a good training session if I'm just going to the gym and I'm still hitting like 20 to 24 sets per muscle group, especially when it comes to legs, and still be able to run the amount of miles that I'm doing. Of course, when it comes to upper body day, I mean, my upper body still, you know, I actually crank up my upper body volume just because I can absorb that kind of volume right now because I'm lowering the volume on my legs. So, that is what my current training program looks like right now, and uh, especially with running, and while I'm able to manage that. Um, I'll put, you know, again, all the sets that I'm doing on the screen, what my, you know, training program looks like each day. I'll put that on the screen for you guys. I'm not saying, again, the, uh, the two videos ago I mentioned do not copy any of your Fitspo's uh, training program. So I'm not saying copy what I do. You can use that as a reference to design your own program, but I'm not saying copy what I do, but use that as a reference, the guide to design your own program as you go on your journey to staying fit and getting jacked <laughs> as you go into 2022. So that is my video for you guys right now. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy it. It's very informative. I'm glad I'm able to do this video. I actually recorded this video a while back and I lost the SD card. So that's why we're doing this video now. And again, if you've enjoyed this video, um, you know, I'll keep bringing it to you guys. I appreciate everybody that's been tuning in uh, to this video and enjoying the video. I appreciate you guys that's been sharing it. If you tag, if you see the video, if you watch it, please uh, reach out to me uh, on Instagram or tag me on Instagram so I can, you know. So thank you for tuning in and let me know if this is video, this videos, videos like this is informative. And if you have any other you know, ideas or videos you want me to do, put in the comment section and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.